Three and a half million people came here in 2019 to see men swirling round in a trance. So this is the lovely city of Konya, home to the world famous whirling dervishes and often thought to be one of the more conservative and religious cities in Turkey. It's in central Anatolia, south of Ankara, and it has a population of over two million people. There are huge universities here, just like other cities in Turkey, and millions of people come here every year. So let's have a quick look around this lovely city. Konya is a mix of old and new. The centre of the old town still retaining its Turkish culture and traditional shopping streets, while just outside developments give Konya its modern uplift. The old part of the city has many lovingly restored old mosques and municipal buildings. Me and Trudy just love streets like this. This is what we regard as the real Turkey. Beautiful and everything's so cheap. And the people here are so friendly. They keep coming and asking us, oh, where are you from? Welcome, you know, push geldings. Perhaps it's your hat. No, I don't think so. Fish in the streets, look at this. Wow. Look at that one, love. 30 stele. 30 stele, That's about £1.40. You can't beat street food, just sitting here in the street eating a Palamut sandwich, which is beautiful. Actually reminds me of Galata Bridge in Istanbul. It's the same sandwich. Brilliant. And only 30 lira. That's £1.40. Delicious. Mm. Lovely. No, you definitely don't need a chicken feeder. On the outskirts of the city, there's a lot of development going on with new houses and shopping malls, but it all looks like it's been done quite tastefully. Except for the rush hour, the roads here are relatively calm compared to many other cities that we've been to. In 2019, Three and a half million people visited Konya, and many of them come to see the mausoleum of the famous poet from the 13th century, Mevlana Rumi, and of course, whirling dervishes. Rumi's mausoleum is a very moving place and it's easy to see from the people visiting here. He still has a huge following and his legacy lives on. This beautiful building, which is highly decorated in vivid colors, has many of his personal items, including the clothing he wore in the 13th century. Of course this is not just Rumi's tomb, it's also the room of his family and any poignant people he was involved with. And in this museum are many of Rumi's writings, sayings and poems. And some of these books are hundreds of years old.
Rumi made famous the Mevlevi order of Sufism, a form of deep meditation or trance that we know today as the twirling dervish. It is said that this trance is only achieved by those totally devoted to God in a whirling dance which is called the Sema. This form of religious ecstasy is only one of the ceremonies formed by the Sufi and it was never intended as a form of entertainment. But there's much more to this ceremony than just whirling round in a dance. The full ceremony, which starts with prayer and the changing from black into white clothing, takes over an hour. It's their foot technique which gives the appearance of them floating through the air. And it takes years to perfect. And it's performed for tourists a few times a week, usually at the weekends. It's a good idea to check the website as the times and venues can change weekly. You can book online or pay on the door and it's a very reasonable price, only a few pounds. Many of the things to visit here are orientated around religion. Most are turbe or tombs, like this one of the Selchuk Sultans. And of course there are several beautiful mosques with elaborate stonework. like the Azizir Mosque with its stylish minarets and gold leaf decor. There are so many parks in this city and they are really superb. In the last 30 years there's been huge changes here and the town planners have done an amazing job. This one is Aladdin's Hill which is a big roundabout really. So apparently this park was given to Konya by the Japanese as a present. But apart from a few pagodas and a lot of koi carp, it's pretty similar to any normal park. But there is one park here that is full of butterflies. So this is the Tropical Butterfly Park, which is a fabulous place to see butterflies. But it's really hot inside, so don't wear jeans and a woolly jumper.
This place, which is really called the Tropical Butterfly Garden, really has a beautiful garden with several huge species of butterflies in it. So we've come to get scientific. <laughs> the Science Centre, which is another space age building, is really suited for kids, which was perfect for me. <laughs> so it's basically an air gun, isn't it? It's like a gun. Oh, it's quite powerful. It's more of an educational centre with many interactive things to try. <laughs> hey, perhaps you should have me like that, lovey. So this is how you make a statue of yourself. How's that? Right. Push the belly in a little bit. And you can even experience walking on the moon. Walking back on your house, walking on the moon. <laughs> this is not a very big museum, but it has got some fabulous stuff in it and it's free. There are some fantastic Roman pieces in this museum but many of the artefacts are Neolithic from as far back as 8,000 years ago. Konya Archaeological Museum might be a small museum, but it's got some fantastic items which come from a place called Chatel Huyuk, which is one of the most important archaeological sites ever found. So this is a replica house of the houses they found here in Chatel Huyuk. They're some of the first houses they've ever found other than a cave. And of course you can see by the paintings on the wall, they're very similar to old cave paintings. And another thing that's very unusual is the people from Chatal Hayuk thousands of years ago actually buried their dead in the floor of their house. And that's what they're portraying here. This shows you what they found here. One is a handprint one and fish hooks and one's a rare mirror was unearthed here made of highly polished obsidian wow there would have been a hole in the roof which would have been their door actually so they were dug into the ground and the hole that we've just entered this little house through is just for us that wouldn't have been there that would have been under the ground 
So this is a massive replica of the Kibele statue, a small mother of God they found here at Chattel Hoog. And that miniature is in the Ankara Museum of Anatolian Civilizations. Amazing to think people were living here in these little houses 8,000 years ago. And they are building a new visitor centre and cafe for this site because of its importance. Chattel Hoog is about 60 miles away from Konya, but it only takes you about 45 minutes in a car through a huge agricultural area. There's a lot of museums in Konya, and this one's quite an unusual one. This is the Panorama Museum. These panoramas are getting more and more popular in lots of cities and they're actually really interesting, especially for tourists, because it sort of tells you the whole story of how Konya has developed over hundreds and thousands of years. It's nice that they've got the stonework going into the picture, so it gives that 3D effect. And there's an art gallery here too with some fabulous paintings. I mean, just look at the quality of this picture. It's fantastic. And in the garden are these miniature uh, Mevlani lodges, which are from all over Turkey and Cyprus. In the restaurants and lacanters in and around the old city, we couldn't find any place selling alcohol with your meal. And we were even more surprised to find that most of the hotels don't serve alcohol either. The Hilton Garden Hotel was the only one we could find that actually sells alcohol. And I can't believe they got a drinks license right next to the religious center of the city. You can find alcohol, of course, in all the tech L shops which are all over the city, and then take your drink back to your room and drink it there. Of course, outside of the city centre, you'll find places, in places like Selçuklu, there are hotels that do serve alcohol and do have bars and restaurants, so, but they tend to be a little bit more expensive to stay. There are lots of big shopping centres of course, they've all got the big famous names, but they're only really busy at the weekends. So most of these shopping malls are very similar, except this one's got a fabulous restaurant right on the top of it. So we've come to this Kule Cine restaurant, which is on the top floor of this tower, of the Kule Tower, which is 42 floors up. Birobas. Number one. Oh. It's going really fast, isn't it? Yeah, and you can't you can't see I thought you'd be able to see at the view. But well, you can't feel anything, can you? Oh, you, my, know, you can't tell you're moving. I can feel the breeze on my feet. The floor's actually rotating, so it's not a good idea to put your handbag on the side because that actually isn't moving. So the next table will get your handbag. <laughs> and I did a time lapse just to prove it. From up here you get a fantastic view of the whole of the city, so you can see all the new development that's going on. And it is quite amazing. And you don't realise how much industry there is here because the Sanaya, that's the industrial estate, is massive. This is Ali Nazi. It's a, a lamb on a bed of yogurt. It's delicious. Ali mm. Nazi. What have you got? I've got kraut kebab. Paper kebab, which is fillet steak with cheese on and tomato. So we just had a lovely dinner and it came to 20 quid. With a view like that. Fabulous. Teşekkür ediyoruz. Teşekkür ediyoruz. Saffron restaurant, is it? This is 
And they've got quite a considerable vegan menu as well. And the food was pretty good. All the cities in Turkey have a monument of Ataturk, the founder of the Turkish Republic. And in one street leading to this monument, there are several lovely buildings. Even Bim, the supermarket, is in one. And Ataturk stayed in this lovely house many times. Behind me is the Ataturk Evi Museum, but like most museums in Turkey, they're closed on a Monday. So of course, I had to come back on my Tuesday. So Ataturk actually came to this building more than 13 times. What is now the museum is similar to others that we've visited, but in this one there were so many well-known outfits of Ataturk's. and his very famous fur-collared coat along with other personal items and gifts but something I hadn't seen before and very special was a picture of his mother So what about hotels? Well, there's over 50 hotels in Konya and you can find reasonably priced hotels right near the center of the old town. We stayed in this hotel, the Selcha, which we booked online for 35 pounds a night. And it's got all the modern facilities. Including an underground car park garage and the room was okay too, with a mini fridge and a kettle. And it's just a 10 minute walk to the Mevlana Museum. We didn't stay in two different hotels like we usually do here, but we did go and have a look at a couple of them like this one, the Think Hotel, which has a nice restaurant next door and a terrace cafe overlooking the Mevlana Square. And the Bablin Hotel, which is a boutique style hotel which has classy rooms and a lovely breakfast terrace. Outside of the main city, in places like Selçuklu, you will find the bigger hotels like the Ibis, the Nova Hotel, but, and of course they've got fantastic facilities, but we did find they were a little bit more expensive and prices around 70 to 100 pounds. There's two train stations here. This is the YHT train station, which, is, which stands for the Yüksek Hızlıtreni, the high speed train. And that's one of the best ways to get from Ankara or Istanbul is on the high speed train. Of course, if you're a local, you will easily use all the bus services and the tramway services, which are great. But for somebody who's just visiting, it's much easier to get yourself a taxi and then not expensive. And of course, they put their meter on, which is in the mirror. And there are taxi ranks about every 200 meters all around the city. Or you can always get a scooter. Just a short ride out of the city is a pretty little village. Sile was a Greek village before 1923, but now it's a thriving tourist gem. Sile has lots of riverside restaurants and a few boutique places to stay too. 
The Greeks lived here in harmony with the Turks before the population exchange of 1923. And the village houses have mostly been beautifully restored, including what is now the museum. But it's the Greek Orthodox Church which is the most impressive building, with its beautiful interior. Further up the hill is the reservoir, which is worth a visit, especially in the heat of the summer. So is Konya the most religious city in Turkey? No, it might have been 30 years ago, but if you look around, the people, yes, they wear a bit more conservative clothing to places like Fethiye in Antalya or Izmir, but Apart from that, and you can't find alcohol in bars and restaurants, it's no different to any other city here in Turkey. So that's it from here in Konya. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss where we go next. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. If you like this type of travel documentary, click one of the boxes and watch another of our travel videos.